Good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Zach, and thank you for coming to a ShareFaith Academy webinar, where today's topic, we're going to specifically be looking at getting a church website up and running in no time. And you guys, I think you're going to be uh, really uh, surprised and hopefully uh, very excited about how easy it is, really, to get everything that you need together to get your website up and running. We're going to have uh, lots of different topics uh, in regards to this, and if you uh, were uh, somebody who was on our email list beforehand, if you signed up ahead of time and got our reminder emails, you should have gotten a downloadable workbook that came in those emails that can just kind of help you follow along with what we're doing. Um, if you came in kind of last minute and are just now joining us, uh, we will make sure to include that as well in our follow-up so you still get a copy of that later. Uh, just so everybody knows, uh, you should see me here on your screen, and then down below, there should be an area for chatting, and we would love it if everybody who's coming uh, could just kind of pop in there real quick and just kind of tell us uh, maybe what city and state you're from, or just something to let us know that you guys are there and that everything is working for you properly. That'd be great. And uh, with me today, I have uh, my good associate, Aaron, who is going to be on chat there with you guys. So anytime during, uh, during the presentation, feel free to hop on there. Uh, if you have any comments or questions or anything like that, we'd love to hear from you. And uh, definitely, if there are any questions, too, that we can get to at the end of this thing, then we will make sure to follow up with you guys and answer those all to the best of my ability. So we'll go ahead and get started. Before we do, I would love to pray for you guys, though. Thanks so much for coming again and just spending a little time with us out of your busy day. Father God, I just ask that you would bless uh, today's presentation and just that uh, everything would go smoothly with everything that we're talking about. I pray that the information here would be fruitful and just really help the people who have come to hear about it. And ultimately, Lord, that we just learn how we can utilize these different resources out here uh, as a means of proclaiming the gospel and spreading your kingdom, which is really the end goal of why we're here. We're so thankful for all that you do. And Lord, we thank you for the amazing way that we have today to be able to uh, broadcast and spread your message to the world. Uh, all around, Lord, and so we ask that you'd bless this time, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, so uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and switch you guys over so you can see my screen. Oh, I forgot my remote. My remote. Let me fix it. All right, that should switch you guys over. You should now see a big screen that says creating and publishing your church website. So, the first thing I want to talk about is really the preparation stage of getting your website ready. Now, some of you may have already gotten, uh, kind of gotten started on your website, and that's fantastic. That's not a problem. These are things that are very helpful uh, to have before you begin, but even if you're uh, in the middle of it, uh, you might find some of this information. Maybe you haven't gotten it all together yet, and it would be good just to know what, uh, what kind of information is helpful to have on beforehand. Secondly, once we talk about that, we're going to go over the necessities every church website should have. Uh, these are the things that really um, you'll probably might think are you know kind of uh, real common sense, but again, not everybody necessarily thinks of all the different pieces that they might need ahead of time. And uh, honestly, I'm going to just talk about that because that's something where even if that's all you have are these necessities, that's good enough to get your site up and running and online and doing more than it is by not having a website. And then after we talk about the necessities, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a walkthrough with you guys, so you guys will really get to kind of see uh, some of the stages and process of getting your website put together. And then we'll talk a bit more about uh, different things you can do to add appeal to your site, some design options uh, and different things like that, different features uh, that don't necessarily need to be there right away uh, from the starting gate with your website, but we'll definitely add some functionality and uh, really get more traction out of your site that way. And then speaking of traction, we'll talk a bit about things that you can do after you've gone live and uh, squeeze in some final touches there that will help you guys just kind of keep in mind different things that you can do once you're done so that way you can really maximize your traffic and get uh, the most from your website once that's done. So the first thing we're going to talk about are the preparation stages. And the first one uh, of these points, now if you have your workbook, you'll see there are five points that we're going to talk about. So this is point number one. Getting information from your ministry leaders. Again, this might kind of seem like, yeah, maybe I've already done that. Um, some people might be trying to do all this solo, though. And uh, I don't, you know, different people here probably have uh, different situations they're in with helping with their website. Um, some people might be volunteers who are brought on board. Others could be staff members. Um, some of you might be the pastor who's doing everything. And that's, that's honestly you know, something we run into a lot 
uh, with people who are uh, signing up with ShareFaith. So, you know, it's really helpful to kind of try and gather some teammates and uh, figure out, you know, you know, if you can talk to your other ministry leaders, whoever's in charge of children's ministry, whoever's in charge of outreaches, um, different things like that. If you have anybody else who's helping you with that, uh, to get information from them. So you can make sure that you're including what they would like other people to know on your website as well. And it kind of puts a little bit more uh, definitiveness behind uh, the information that's there for the ministry. Um, so people know like it's coming straight from that leader and so they understand the heart of it. Uh, but again, that's just something that's really helpful. And I would, uh, in most cases, even like just try to give a, you know give them as much heads up as you can because I know, especially when you have so many volunteers in ministry, it can be a real pain sometimes getting all of this gathered together. Um, but you know, in the meantime, you can definitely put information on your site by just kind of putting the bug in their ear, saying like, "Hey, you guys, we're getting this put up now. So the sooner you can get this to me, the better. We can get this up there, and you can make sure that your ministry is being represented properly." Secondly, determining which pages you want in advance. Sometimes people just kind of jump right into the site and then start going from there. And that could be you and that could be fine. Um, but other times I can tell you it just kind of helps to have a bit of a chart or like a kind of a, a flow chart, if you will, something that can uh, help you understand like, okay, these are the pages you want to be your main pages. These are the ones you want to come underneath as sub pages. Um, and, and if there's any other pages that you'd like to have but don't necessarily want to clutter your menu with, um, you know, so you can do all that on your site, but having an idea of which ones are going to be the top priority ones to have up first is going to be a huge, huge help for you just so you have a structured uh, approach when you're going to it later. Uh, also, aside from just getting information, getting together images and resources. So this could be things like staff photos, this could be things like your logos. Um, if you have a logo for your church, making sure that you have uh, as many different formats you know, as you guys have of that. If you've got any that are kind of more square, if you have some that are uh, more rectangular, you know, there's different things that you can use your logo on, even in your website. Um, so it's good to have all the variations of it that you can and making sure that it's a transparent background that's used for it. So if you have a designer who's put that together for you, in most cases they'll already kind of make it that way. Um, but otherwise, you know, if you have anything like that already made, it's great to get all of those files together just to help you as you're putting together the rest of the site. And staff photos is a big one. Um, even things like images of your church that you might want to have on a page on your site, maybe your home page or an about page or something like that, um, where you just want to have something that people can see that's tangible uh, to understand like that's what your church looks like. Uh, that could be the church building or it could be your, uh, your congregation and uh, maybe a mixture of both. So it's great to have somebody come out. If you have anyone in your church who uh, is a decent photographer, that's fantastic and you can maybe ask them and try to get something scheduled with them to come do something like that. Um, but even, even if you want to uh, go out on a limb and just hire somebody uh, for an hour or two to come out to your church and just do some pictures, it goes a long way and it really adds to the look and feel of your site by doing that. Uh, fourth point is to talk to your web team about responsibilities. So again, I was saying earlier, like everybody here uh, who's watching this is probably in a different situation. Uh, there's some of you who are completely by yourself in this, and that's fine. And honestly, even if you're in that situation, we're going to do our best here to make sure that you guys feel completely confident and equipped for everything that you need to do. Um, but if you have a team that you're working together with, uh, it's great to make sure that you kind of meet together and establish roles and responsibilities ahead of time. So who's going to be in charge of what pages if you're going to separate it out like that? Or even certain things like just uploading the sermons each week or making sure that there's a new blog post or uh, you know making sure that the, the contact form is being managed, things like that. So if anybody uh, is doing any part of helping at all with the church website, just making sure that you have clear expectations and you're keeping everyone accountable to making sure that they're staying on top of their tasks. And then uh, last but certainly not least, this is a biggie. So if you already have a website previously, uh, you want to make sure that you have all the information that you need for when you're ready to replace it. So that means you want to get, uh, you want to make sure that you know who your web host is, whoever is hosting the old website, and also uh, whoever has the domain registered through. Sometimes that's the same as your web host. Uh, a lot of times that could be another company though. So it's good to kind of track down anybody who helped set that up originally. Um, and just talk to them and get that information. If you don't have access to that, which does happen sometimes where you don't necessarily have all of that info together, but you would still like to use your old domain name that you already have, uh, then it's good to start doing some research online 
And uh, you know, making sure you can track down where your domain is registered through is probably the biggie. And then also just making sure you know where the old site's being hosted through, just so that way if you need to, you can cancel your old hosting service after you're no longer using it. So that's just stuff that you want to keep in mind. And it's not all of this stuff doesn't have to be 100% uh, collected before you get started, but it's just things that really help and things to keep in mind as you're progressing on your church website. So now, uh, moving on from the, uh, from the things that are helpful to have to prepare, now let's talk a bit about the necessities for when you're building. So I'm going to kind of mention some of the things that you want to make sure that your church website has. And really, if your church website has this, in any case, it's going to be fine to be able to go ahead and publish it online. And then from there, we'll talk about more stuff that you can add. And you, if you have time, you can do that before you publish it. Uh, but the goal is we want to get you up and running, because when it comes to having an online presence, having one is always better than not. So you want to make sure you've got something that's up there, and that way people can start finding you online as soon as today. And really, you're going to see that, honestly, after this webinar, you guys can just hop onto your sites and then be able to get those up and running in no time. So the first thing you can see on my screen is a home page. I know, I know, home page, of course. You have to have that. If you don't have a home page, then you don't have anything. So your home page, though, is your first impression of the rest of your site. So it's important to do the home page right. And it doesn't mean that it has to have a whole bunch of information on it. In fact, that could maybe backfire. Um, but making sure that it's just nice and well presented. Uh, having a home page, in many cases, is also the first page. I'm sorry, the, uh, the first impression someone has of your home page is, in many cases, the first impression someone has of your church. When they come to your site and they see how your website looks right from the get-go, uh, that can make a difference as to how well they feel that you guys are maintaining it, if it's updated at all. Uh, and making sure that they want to go see it. And it kind of, it kind of, it, it might be a bit superficial to some people, but in a lot of ways, it, it immediately tells somebody a bit about what the health of a church looks like to see how well their website's being maintained. Uh, silly to some, but really, you know, when you're dealing with just trying to make sure that people are hearing the message and that you're getting people coming to your church to be able to win, minister to them, ultimately, you know, we just want to do what we can to help with that. So aside from the home page, you also want to make sure you have an about page. And uh, again, this is something where you're, you're telling your story in a way on your about page to your church. You're giving them an idea of who the people are that are part of your, uh, that are part of your, um, uh, part of your church. So this could be staff members could be on here. Uh, a lot of times people will put staff on their about page. Or uh, a lot of times, you know, it might have a mission and vision of the church, which is also fantastic to have. Um, you know, maybe even... Uh, you know, just something talking about uh, different ministries that are in the church. So depending on how much uh, you want to use the About page for, you can sometimes break that off into other pages too if you want to. Um, but you can always start out with just kind of a, a real a brief summary on the About page to give people an idea of who they can expect to, you know, to be a part of and see when they come through your doors. After About page, we have service times. So service times obviously are a big one because if people come to your website, it's uh, good to know when they can come to your church too. Uh, so make sure you have your service times listed. And again, that might seem like a, a no-brainer to some folks, but you would be surprised at actually how many times you might run across a church website and they don't have any of this information. Um, aside from knowing when to come, you want to make sure you know where to come. Uh, location. So um, if you have, uh, in most churches are just a single campus location, but if you're a multi-campus, you want to make sure that you have all of the locations of your campuses listed out so people know which ones are available for them to go to. Um, even locations like locations to small groups, if you guys have small groups in your communities that you're doing, uh, or maybe uh, uh, in Bible study locations, if those are different, just make sure you have all of that information laid out so people know all the ways that they can come and interact and be a part of the church. And then last but not least, having a contact uh, section. So this one can actually get overlooked quite a bit. Um, people don't necessarily think of a, a contact section on a website because um, you know, a lot of times when you're in the church, you already have people's email addresses or phone numbers. Um, but this is actually more, uh, I mean, this can definitely be useful for your church, but I see it, uh, at least in my experience, used more heavily by newcomers, people who are wanting to ask questions, people who want to know more about uh, you know, what's going on with the church. Does your church have these type of ministries? Um, does your church have child care? Uh, you know, things like that. They might not necessarily see all that information on your website, and that's good too, because if you see questions like that coming through, you can get ideas then like, hey, we need to make sure we get that up on the website. Uh, but having information like that and having a way that people can still reach out to you if they have further questions or if they need to speak to somebody on the staff or anything like that, 
um, making sure that information is available so that you're available to be able to speak with them if they ever have any questions for you. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pop out of the presentation here for a bit because I want to give you guys a quick uh, rundown on some of the tools and resources that come with your website so you can get an idea of how to put all of these necessities together. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my browser. All right, so right now I'm logged in to a Share Faith Church website, and I know that because I see my handy dandy sidekick toolbar here on the left hand side of my screen. So when you're logged in, you can see everything that's going on, on your site. It's really neat because you have the option to preview your changes in real time before you actually save them and publish them for the world to see. Now if you haven't already published your site yet, which I know probably a lot of folks in this webinar are, are in that boat where they haven't got anything live yet, um, you have complete freedom to come in here and do with it what you will. So you can see this is the home page here, and this particular template that I'm on uh, utilizes a video background. So it's a really neat way, it's kind of a cool visual element, just kind of provides some, uh, some pizzazz, if you will, when somebody comes to your church website. So it can be a great way to kind of stop them for a second and go, whoa, that's really cool they have that. If you ever want to, you can change your backgrounds at any time. So like, if, for example, like this is, this is cool like for a candlelight service or something like that. Um, you may not be having something like that though, which if that's the case, go ahead and you can go up to this little mountain icon when you're logged in. And you can actually put anything you want as a background for your site, as long as the image is big enough. So um, you can do either your own images, you can actually go ahead and upload your own images to your website if you want to, which is really cool. So again, if you get some pictures of your church, uh, of your congregation, of people doing stuff, you can upload that and use that as a homepage background. That's a, that's a pretty cool thing, and that's, that's kind of something that immediately shows some life that's happening at your church. Um, otherwise, too, you can also check out these stock images that we have uh, like already integrated in. So there's thousands of images here that you can pull from. So like, let's say you want to be cool and have maybe something with a sunset in it. And so you can do searches for key terms, and voila, we got some cool sunset pictures. I'll go ahead and maybe pick this one. Ooh, that's fancy. So I'll go ahead and save it. And then now it's switched from being a video background to a picture background. But it looks awesome, so that's all that really matters. And making sure that whatever it is, you know, you want to make sure it's, not, it's relevant. You don't just throw like a random picture up there. Be, be, be intentional with what you put on your homepage and make sure that it's something that uh, really, I, you know, wants to speak about your church to other people. Um, you know, something like this, landscape scenery, this could be great if it's perhaps a sermon series that matches with it that you guys want to promote, or maybe you guys live in a coastal town or something. You know, you can think of ways that you can kind of, you know, make your homepage speak more and illustrate more for you. So now as I scroll down, the next section on this website is essentially an about section. So this is a really cool, I, I like this nice compact about section myself. Um, you know, different churches are going to have different views, so like maybe you don't necessarily want to go crazy with all this information, um, so you just have more of a, a summary of what you guys are about and have like a quick page with some staff photos on it, and so that's really nice in this case, um, and if you want to, you can get crazier, you can always uh, even just have a summary that shows up on your homepage like this does, and then maybe have a more specific uh, page that's in your menu later, so like, uh, but for this one, I'll go ahead and click the little pencil icon this time. So this one's for the background. The mountain is for the background, remember that. And the pencil allows me to edit the content, the stuff that's like the text and the pictures that are in here. So you can see this is all kind of broken up into some different rows. And this is, a, this is nice that uh, the templates actually come laid out like this. So they give you an example layout that you can work with. Now you're free to go in here and just, if you want to, you can clear all this out. You can just hit these little trash can icons and take all of these away and start over with a clean slate. That's totally fine. Um, if you want to kind of capture the same look and feel that this template has, but you know, obviously put in your own, your own information, then that's great too. And that's a great way to immediately get things up and running. And you can always do that first and then come back and you know, do some major overhauling later if you want to. But for the sake of just getting yourself up and running, you can come in here and it's very easy to go in and I, I mean, I can just click on any of these pictures and I have options here if I want to remove them or I can edit them. So let's say I want to edit these pictures and put in uh, you know, my staff, my peeps. I'm going to go ahead and click to edit this picture. And you know, all these little, this little window here. And there's a cool little just replace button right here. This is very easy to work with. I can click on this and then it pulls up my whole media library. So now this is stuff I've already uploaded. This is things I've already got uh, on the website. If I want to, I can upload some pictures through this section. 
and just drag and drop them in or select them here. Or I'll just go to my media library. I've got some, some pictures. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, take some of the staff here, share faith. And I'm going to use them as my, my guinea pigs. And I'll replace some of the photos in here. So I can just kind of go through and click on each of these. I'm going to edit, replace, and there's Mr. David. And just get all their smiling faces up on my page. There's Aaron, guy on chat with you guys. Oops, his picture's a little small. I like how easy it is to kind of make some quick adjustments. I don't recommend with pictures that you want to be real sharp to change their size much on the website. It's good to do all that stuff ahead of time. But for the sake of demonstration, I'm just making sure that you guys can see. The nice thing here is uh, these pictures are all formatted the same. So that's things to keep in mind, too. Like if you're doing staff photos, anything that you want to have like a real consistent look about, uh, just make sure that you keep that consistency whenever you're making your photos, whenever you're making them a certain size. If you have a designer, they can do all this for you. If not, there's lots of different tools out there that you can use uh, that are even easier than Photoshop if you're not familiar how to use that to do things like that. I mean, you can see right there, I even just used the website to do a quick adjustment. So I've got all my pictures in. Then I can go through and I can say, this is Mr. Sean. Oops. Say, this is Mr. Sean Oliveira. I'll get rid of, oops. Sean's going to beat me up if I spell his name wrong. So I can go through and change out the text here. Uh, the formatting you know, stays the same. Uh, if I want to, I could even do things like changing the color uh, up here in your toolbar. This is where you'll probably spend most of your time you know, making some changes here and there. Uh, you've got all the stuff for changing the format of the text, uh, changing the fonts. It's really neat because you can even upload your own fonts in the Sidekick panel. Uh, changing the sizes. I'm going to change the color. Let's go with like a, a cool blue color maybe. Something a little bit more. There we go. And uh, now when I go to another column, it's going to kind of give me a new new set of tools to work with. I mean, it's, it's essentially going back to what was there. But I like with the text color, you actually have them saved. So like the most, the previous 10 colors here will be saved. You can just choose from any of them. So it makes it real easy to make quick little adjustments like this as you bounce from one column to the next. So I can do that for each of these. Now also, uh, so these rows are essentially you know, what make out your layout. Uh, and we oftentimes will refer to them as layout rows. So you can see there's different ones we've got in here. We've got ones that are just big boxes that go all the way across, and you can put whatever in them. This one obviously has four columns in it, so it kind of separates things out a little bit better. Um, if we want to add more, there's just a little plus sign down here at the bottom of the page. And when we click on that, it gives us options for different uh, amounts of rows, or sorry, different amounts of columns. So, uh, you kind of can mix and match this all together however you want. If I want to do a three column uh, layout, and then it's nice because you can even drag and drop the order of these. These little bars here on the left allow you to move these things around. So if I want a three column row right above these guys, I can do that. And I can even space them out. These cool little diamond uh, bars right here, I can drag these and put these as close together or as far away as I want to. Um, so that's nice if you want to kind of create your own unique spacing for that page. So it's really neat. All right, so once I'm done making my fancy changes, I'm going to go ahead and save my page. And voila, look at that. We put a little color in there. That looks nice. I like that. Lots of, uh, lots of color. Uh, Aaron's smiling face right there uh, with the name Alyssa underneath, and I'm sure he's appreciating that a great deal right now, I can tell. So, uh, so you know, an about page, again, like right above here, we have a mission and vision, kind of a, a real brief summary of it. You can go you know, far more above this if you want to do some more with it. Um, you can even break it down even further. So like under about, if you want to have uh, a new page, I can go to content here, and I can add in a new page. Let's say I want to make one for uh, mission and vision. And then you can do whatever you want. So this is a whole clean slate page you can work with. You can put in a title. And let's say I want to make this a heading, center it. And you can play with all these different tools. There's tons of tools here um, in the toolbar that are just there for your use. So you can feel free to use whichever ones you want. Um, they're just there to help you do some simple things. And a lot of times, I think you're going to find this to be very similar to using a word processor. Um, I mean, you can see there's really no coding or anything that you have to know in order to do this. So it's, it's very straightforward with just being able to get in and edit as you want to. And uh, if you also, uh, 
or here, let's see, I'll just add in um, a quick thing, a commission, and then center that. So I can kind of give this a cool uh, multi-structured layout like the other one has. I'll just save this for now. I don't need to get into all that. You guys can kind of see what's going on there. So uh, after I save this page, now once I've got the Our Mission and Vision page created, <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and apply my changes here. Oops. Let's see if I can do that real quick. So then let's do. Refresh my page here. So once the page is created, then it should appear here under the oh, little survey. <clears throat> you'll see that it now appears here under my additional pages. So that just means that it's a hidden page. Uh, I can still have people get to it if I provide a link to it or something like that, or I can just not if it's going to be a page that I don't have up all the time or don't want people to use all the time. But this one, I want it to appear in my menu. So I can just drag and drop it wherever I want it to go in the menu. Now I can put it up here, but I kind of feel like this is more maybe a subpage under about. So rather than have my menu taken up with all this stuff, I'll just kind of drag this over to the right underneath. And now, when I hover over about, Mission and Vision shows up. So very straightforward and easy. Now, the other thing that you want to make sure that you kind of do towards the beginning of uh, getting your site, definitely before you get it up and published, uh, check and see what the site title is. So if I go to the Settings tab in Sidekick, um, you might, uh, a lot of times we try to get your church name in there if you've given that to us and put that in there for you. Uh, but if we, if we don't have it or if it's not there, uh, just go in and you can type in whatever you want for your site title. Now, why is this important? Well, uh, for one thing, your site title is what appears in these cool little tabs in whatever browser that people are using. So that's one thing. Uh, the other thing is when somebody's doing a search for your website, your site title is what they're going to see. That's going to show up on their search results. So if they go to Google or Bing or uh, Yahoo, whatever, when they type in a search and they find your church in the listings, then your site title is what appears. You can also do uh, some more fancy things here with design. I'm not going to show you all that stuff right away because we just want to give you guys all the information you need to get things up and running right away. So now, uh, lastly, we'll just go through and make sure you guys see an example of how you can include other information that we talked about, like the location, the service times, the contact, all of that. So this one is a, a great example. And this is, just, this is just an example. There's different ways you can do this. There's tons of different ways you can do this. You can get super creative. Um, for this one, for location, all they've done is they've got uh, a, study, or a, a heading up there that says visit a blaze this Sunday, and then they've just embedded a Google map. So we have a tutorial that shows how to do that. It's pretty, it's pretty easy. You can just type in your address on Google or Maps Quest, or if you still use that, or anything like that. You can go on there, you can type in your address and embed, uh, get a code for it to put on your website. So that way people can click on something like directions and then immediately get directions to that location from wherever they're at, and they can see where you guys are located at. OK, well, that's pretty easy. Then down here, we have other information, such as your contact details. So you, you definitely want to make sure you include your address. That's good for uh, search engine purposes, too. Um, include your address like written out somewhere, and it's good to have that on a contact page. Uh, and then also, you can put in, uh, uh, like, if you, if you want to include your phone number to your church, if you have a phone there. Um, I know not every church does, but if you have a phone number to your church, that's great to include that there. Uh, I, I, even though this template uses an email address, I personally would probably recommend using a contact form instead. It's a bit more secure, and you're less likely uh, to get you know, in, you know, stuff that you don't want. So I, but you can put like a generic email if you want to have one listed. Uh, I would say like if you want to have like you know, office at your church website or whatever you'd like to have there, that could work too. So you can do that, or like I said, you can even have a contact form embedded that people can fill out and be able to contact you right away from your website. Um, so again, you can play with these different things. I mean, if I click to edit, you can just see all I've got here is a box that has my code in it. And so I just copied that code from Google. It's just a copy and paste thing. It doesn't require me to know really uh, much there. I just plug it right in, and then I save my page, and it immediately pops the map in for me. And likewise, this area down here, just so happens, this is just text here. So this is really easy to edit. Or if you want to, you can do the contact form as well. And we've got tutorials on all these different features so you guys can see what that all looks like.
Honestly, like I said, that's pretty much the basics. You don't need to have uh, necessarily all of the stuff that this features right away. It's got some great things to keep in mind. You can see there's different things pointing to ministries right here. So it's definitely great to get uh, different information about your ministries up as soon as you can. Um, there's online giving set up with a ShareFaith giving form on it. Uh, we have sermons built in with a sermon player, which we'll kind of look at here in a bit. I want to make sure we've got enough time. So that's, that's all you really need in a sense uh, to, to have your basics. Now, uh, the sermons are definitely a great tool, and they're going to be part of what we're going to talk about next. I'm going to back out of this just for a minute and go back to my presentation so you guys can see that. So the next part is adding appeal to your site. So we talked about the basics. What are the basics? So making sure your homepage is a good presentation, a good representative for you, for your church. So having some, uh, some good imagery on there. Again, with that, you could do things like put up images of your church or grab a cool stock photo or use a video, different things that are available for you there. Um, also having a about page with the mission and vision, kind of a story of your church that they can see, maybe some staff photos. And then also having different things like service times, locations, contact information. That's all important. Now these are the things that can uh, definitely uh, be pretty easy and quick things that will instantly add more appeal to your site. Uh, basically, you know, it's, it's one thing to get people there. It's another thing to get them to come back. And it's a great thing when your site's being a great do a tool, a consistent tool that people can use uh, to find information and stay in the loop. So the first point I have here is to keep it clean, keep it simple. And by that, I mean just making sure that you don't clutter things like with your menu, kind of like what you saw there. I, I was organizing the menu a bit because I don't want uh, a huge menu that's going all over the place or, or have too many pages that maybe don't need to be like a top level page in there. Um, but so you can put in things, uh, so you can just organize things neatly so that way it makes sense as people are going through your navigation as to how to get to different pages. Um, also, you know, as you're going through the site, just kind of making sure that uh, it has a very, you know, very structured feel. has a has a very intentional feel. I should say people should, uh, you know, see items that make sense to them to be on there. If you have images, you know, make sure that those images fit with whatever that page is talking about. Uh, you know, don't just like plaster random images of teddy bears on your site if you're not talking about teddy bears. Um, and if you're talking about teddy bears, that's interesting. So. Uh, moving though, <laughs> so, but keeping it clean, keeping it simple. Uh, also, as I said, making, uh, so this kind of is what I was talking about just now, making good use of visuals. So uh, definitely visuals should help illustrate what you're talking about. They should not distract from what you're talking about. Um, so that means that it's good to use them, but don't go crazy. Uh, you know, you don't need images on every single thing on your site. It's good to use them uh, when appropriate for backgrounds. It's good to use them when appropriate uh, to kind of illustrate a point that you have in, in your content. Um, but you don't need to go crazy with them. And sometimes I think churches kind of like feel like they need to, to fill in the space too much. And they put too many visuals in there. And there's also a catch-22 to that because the other side is, you know, some people get a bit too text heavy. And then you don't, you kind of need visuals to help break things up. So you can kind of see uh, where to do that and read through and make sure what, you know, kind of see what feels best for you as you're, as you're building your site. Also, a big one that um, actually we run into quite a bit here uh, is a problem with keeping fonts consistent. So when you're going through and you're making your site, you're going to have, you know, the ability to choose what fonts you want. So that's really cool, but again, you want to kind of keep them consistent. So like whatever you have set as your paragraph font, which is really the, the stuff that's meant to be read a lot, then you want to make sure that that stays pretty consistent in the same font all through the rest of your church website. Um, you don't want to like have your home page look one way and your about page look another and then your ministries page look like that. Um, it just gets a bit too chaotic and it doesn't look very professional when you do that. So I recommend keeping fonts consistent, uh, having you know a, a good feel for um, you know every once in a while you can change it up and do something a little different depending on what it is. Uh, but for the most part, just trying to keep those uh, uniform. And then uh, also adding functionality. So what are your visitors going to want to do when they get to your website? Now, we've talked about the necessities, because those are the main things like when a newcomer come, uh, is coming to your site, like those are the main things that they're looking for. They're right away checking to see, you know, when is service, where is service, uh, you know, how do I, uh, how do I uh, get there and how do I reach out to somebody if I have questions. Um, so that stuff needs to be on there. But there could be other things too. Like maybe they're trying to get there because they missed last week's sermon and they want to catch it online. Or maybe they're trying to get there because they uh, weren't able to, uh, they, they didn't tithe 
or they, they're late on tithe or what they're late on tithe. They're, they're trying to tithe or something and they want to be able to go on give online. Um, maybe they're trying to figure out what the schedule is for upcoming events. That's another thing you can have on your site. So adding that functionality uh, and making sure that there's something there uh, that really serves as a useful purpose for them, aside from just knowing the general details about your church. And these are things that, again, don't need to be there right away, but will definitely help down the road. And then last, but certainly not least, don't let your site get left behind, meaning don't forget to update it. Don't forget to maintain it. This is something too, like if you're working with a team, making sure you're staying on top of each other. Uh, even little things like updating the sermon each week. So when the new sermon's uh, been recorded and it's on the site, that alone is at least something that can tell people when they come to your site that the information is current, even if that's the only thing that maybe has been updated in the last month. Um, but honestly, it's good to still make sure that you're going through and just doing a check on your site every once in a while. It doesn't need to be um, you know, a daily thing by any means, uh, but you know, depending on how much you're able to devote to it, uh, you know, at least going in like once a week and just making sure that the information is right. Um, you know, is it telling people about the correct sermon series that's going on right now? Uh, does it have the correct contact information? Um, you know, if any changes have happened since maybe with a ministry or a staff member, you know, things like that, just making sure that everything is consistent with what's actually going on in your church. So lastly, before we get to the questions, and again, if you guys do have any questions that have come up at all while we're, we're doing this, uh, I want to make sure that we have enough time here that I'm not running my mouth too long. Oh, my mouse worked. There we go. Oh, yeah, no, we're doing great on time. So lastly, uh, I want to talk about oops, things you can do uh, once your site is live. Oh, and also, I don't want to forget, I'm going to show you guys that part too. So things you can do once your site is live. And these are just things to keep in mind. So again, if you're following through in the workbook, uh, hopefully I'm not going too fast for you, uh, I will make sure to send you guys some information follow up with this so you guys can keep track of everything that we've talked about. Uh, but after you've gone live, there are some things to keep in mind that will be a big help to do uh, sooner rather than later. So the first thing is, to promote it to your church. Um, you know, don't just launch your site and then not say anything about it. Tell people it's there, let them know. This can be done through, obviously, your services, having the pastor or worship leader or whoever's in charge of announcements uh, let people know, like, hey, we've got our site up, everything's running great, you know, everything looks great, go check it out, and having people to actually go see it for themselves and then know that it's there, to see it and experience it, and again, so that they can understand, like, that's an area where they can go to for information if they, excuse me, if they need to. Also, don't forget, um, you do get email accounts with your website. Uh, so when you have your domain registered, uh, then you can make sure to go ahead and add email accounts that have that domain name. Uh, give, if you're in a specific situation, sometimes you might already have this set up somewhere else and you don't need us to do it for you too. Uh, most of the time though, I know a lot of users either don't have any email accounts when they're coming in, or if they're moving from someone else, they have to make sure to go ahead and get uh, accounts set up on our end too so they can keep them. And also, don't forget to optimize your site for search engines. We have tutorials that help with this and kind of give you some ideas on ways that you can do that. So that way, when people are looking for like you know churches in your area or something like that, you want to make sure that you come up on search engines. That's one of the biggest ways that your website serves as an outreach for you. So taking some time, uh, and this could be done after it's launched already, uh, just to go through and do things like submit it to Google and Bing. Uh, go through and kind of just optimize the pages. There's different ways you can do that to add keywords and stuff to help make sure that um, your site has relevant information to what people are searching for. So again, we have tutorials that kind of give you guys some ideas. It's not a perfect science, but there's definitely lots of things that you can do that will be a big help for you and uh, help you get ranked up there faster. And then also, uh, don't forget if you are a complete member to get your church app built. Your church app uh, is in many ways like a, uh, I shouldn't say a companion to your site, but it's another way that you can reach out to people and it works through your site. So as you add information to your website, uh, things like new sermons, new blog posts, all of that can be sent to your church app as well. And then it can do additional things like allow them to uh, give online through there or be able to uh, see some direct contact information for people who have the app. Uh, so there's ways that you can do things like that. And it's got a cool Bible reader that they can use during their service, which is awesome. I love it. Um, we've done lots of major improvements to the church apps recently. And so don't forget about that as well. Again, that's for complete members only. But if you're in that spot, then that's all there for you on your website once it's launched. 
All right, so the last thing I want to show you before we get to questions and answers, sorry, is just to go ahead and make sure you see what it's like as far as making your site go live. Now, uh, once you have uh, your website ready for the public to see, so again, doesn't necessarily have to be perfect, doesn't have to have every single thing that you've ever wanted on it right from the get-go, uh, but when you're at a stage where you say, hey, it's got all the necessities, uh, maybe a little bit more, just something so that when people come to it, it will help us be found when people are searching online, then here's what your website hosting control panel looks like. I'll maximize this. So once you get into your hosting control panel, um, really all you have to do is simply add a domain to your website. You're going to be given a temporary one that you've been working on this whole time, kind of looks something like this, and you can go in and add a domain name. So under this panel here on the left, simply go to add new domain. And the options that you have, uh, now again, I talked about before, if you have a previous website that already has a domain name with it, and you would like to keep that domain name, then this is all you have to do is add it in down here. From that point, you're going to take that information I gave you, and we have some tutorials that go step by step on what you need to do with that so we can get everything moved over for you. Now, if you don't have a domain name, you can go up here and add a uh, billing information so that way people who we work with to register domains can do that for you. And then you can register a brand new domain. It'll make sure for you before you do it that it's available. And uh, once the domain is registered, then within 24 hours your new site will be live and you'll be able to do all that fun stuff we talked about with adding email addresses and things like that. So once a domain name is in the system, you can go all over the place with it, and your site will now be available to see under that domain once everything's gone live with it. So, uh, and I said there's a lot more uh, details that are provided in, in some tutorials that we have on that, and our team here at ShareFaith uh, works with folks on this all the time. So one of the goals we want to make sure you guys are educated and equipped so you can go through and, and be able to do all that whenever you need to. Oops, so come back out of this. And then let's go ahead and switch you guys over so you can see me again. See my smiling face? Make sure you guys can see me now. for the okay from Aaron. Okay, great. So, so uh, now at this time, what we'll do is if you guys have any further questions for us, um, Aaron's been checking out the chat for a while, so uh, I'm not sure who we have with us today or if anybody's going to have anything, but we'll definitely try to do our best to answer those for you. Uh, Aaron, was there anything that came in that you saw at all? No? You guys been quiet? Well, maybe I'm just doing a good job explaining things, and that's the way I try to look at it anyway. So um, if there's not anything that comes in, if you guys don't have any questions, then that's great. I hope that this information has been uh, super helpful for you guys, maybe giving you guys some confidence and seeing you know, really all that's needed to be able to get things done. If there are any questions that come up along the way, though, definitely be sure to reach out to us. You can just go to support.sharefaith.com. That's our support site. And you can create a ticket there with any of our member coaches who you know, do these kinds of stuff you know, a thousand times a day each. So if you have any questions for them, be sure to drop a line in there and let them know what's going on. They'll follow up with you guys and make sure that you guys are taken care of. So uh, again, I really hope that this has been a good, a good time for you guys, that you feel like you've gotten a lot out of it. Thank you so much, uh, everyone, for coming today. And I'll go ahead and pray. And we'll stay online for just a little bit afterwards, after the broadcast is over, uh, just to make sure if there's anything that comes in, we'll, we'll keep you guys posted. So. Thank you, God, so much for uh, everything that's going on, Lord, with, uh, with this. And I pray that this is hopefully uh, uh, going to be a great opportunity here for everyone who's come to see this, that they can go online, be able to get everything up and running, establish an online presence, and be found, Lord, so that they can help others uh, be found by you, Lord. I just pray that this, is, this tool can just, you know, remember, Lord, that we, we use this tool as a form of ministry, um, that it can be a way to reach out to others, to impact lives, and ultimately uh, to spread your gospel. So Lord, we ask that you would just bless everyone here uh, as they're going about and working on this stuff, Lord. And I just pray that 
you would just be over them and help them and everything. And, and Lord, uh, we thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, so thanks again, guys. As I said, we'll kind of be on for a little bit on the chat, uh, but we really appreciate you all coming and hope you guys have a great day. God bless.